What's going on guys? Joe from Total Justice Gaming here bringing you another deck profile. This time it's an update to my uh, Bone Labor uh, Death Shido deck. We even got a new um, buddy. This time it is Bone Labor Quin Quinitar. Although Fuller would like to point out, as he reminded me, that this is really Jack the Ripper from some shonen anime a long time ago, Soul King, something like that. The one where they use souls and make them into weapons. I don't remember that one. I have old man anime tastes, so I don't think I saw that one. Shaman King, that's what it was, Shaman King. So this is apparently Jack the Ripper from Shaman King. Anyways, <laughs> so we'll move right into the deck. Hope you guys like it. So we have four copies of Quintar because he's the buddy. Uh, Quintar is, let's me, he is a 0-1-2. Uh, activate ability is if your opponent has no monsters in the center, choose a card in your opponent's drop zone and call, call, this, and call the card at rest. Uh, oh, and rest this card, excuse me. If you do, put a put the chosen card face down in your opponent's center as a size 0, 6,006 6 defense, uh, crit a 2. So, this is both a double-edged sword. The thing this really does is to close the center on the opponents that uh, have shields that say can only work if the opponent's center is open. Uh, so this really hurts Dragon World. This hurts some of Darkness Dragon World, like Black Dragon Shield. It really hurts uh, most world's primary shields, because most world's primary shield is open center. However, you are also calling a 662 size 0 to their field, uh, which they can then use to benefit them. So you have to use this ability very, very carefully. Because at the same time, you're also fueling your units uh, with the ability to take control monsters and get that extra hitting. So you just have to be very careful of what Quintard does for you and what he does against you. Uh, my advice is to use his ability um, when they're very low at life and you want to keep on pressuring them. But he is the buddy. I am running four of him because he does close the center and make uh, primary shields. Uh, obsolete and unable to use. A little technical difficulty. Next up in the deck, we're running four copies of Bone Master Lubu Gallos. I'm not going to be really good at pronouncing these name guys. I apologize. I do better with Asian names than I do. I believe these are Latin or uh, I'd have to ask. Some It's just not a language I'm very good with. So, Gallus is, during your opponent's turn, um, you can rest him and take control of the monster, and he gets the monster gets to attack the opponent. He can also pay Gage and stand Gallus to do his ability once more, making it double attack for potentially between f 2, 4, to 6 damage, uh, given the monster. So, we're running him at a 4. He used to be the old buddy, but uh, I got told, and we did test it, and Quintar, when he's used properly, does make the better buddy. Uh, following Gallus, we have our uh, our Darth, Al Darth. He's just a once-per-turn version of Gallus, meaning um, choose a monster when you're not in combat. On your opponent's field, rest the card. You take control of the opponent's monster and attack it, meaning you can hit them once with it, so it's just a once per turn version of Gallows. Following that, we're running four copies of Bone Labor Sabrage. Uh, she has Shadow Dive, which is very good and very useful, meaning she can, she can attack on her own, you're not relying on an opponent's monster. Uh, and if a card on your opponent's field is attacking alone, Choose a monster that is not in battle on your opponent's field, and then pay to gauge, and it's the attack is redirected to that monster. Meaning, if they're swinging with big units, you can force the big units into the smaller units, wasting their attack. 
All you gotta do is pay two gauge. The important thing is, is that it's not once per turn. So, so long as you have the gauge to pay for this ability, you can keep redirecting the attack until they're out of board. Potentially. Save for the singular monster. Alright, moving on down the road, we got four copies of Phantom Router Gallows Demento. We're running him at a four of, because he's the new Gallows. Uh, he is a 1-3. You may only call uh, Phantom Gallows uh, Demento once per turn. He has Shadow Die because he's got the credit 1. And when a death card on your field attacks, deal damage to your uh, death card attacks and deals damage to your opponent. Draw a card and gain a life. So our cards with Shadow Dive, if they hit and deal damage, I get to gain a life and draw a card. So Sabraj can do it, Demento can do it, and some of my other monsters later on down the road can do it. The other important thing to note is that he's also a size 0. That becomes very, very important with some cards we're going to look at in just a moment. But we're running him out of 4 of because he just allows life gain and draw just for dealing damage, which is very easy due to Shadow Dive. So, following this, we're running two copies of Gate Guider Detay. It's called Causes Pay Gauge. When this card enters the field, you may call a card with Shadow Dive. Uh, other than Gate Guider Detay, my pain is Cold Cost, and he's got Shadow Dive. So, this means I can go get Sabrage, I can go get Demento, I can get the rest of the cards in my deck. So long as they got Shadow Dive to take and go get them and bring them out just for paying their call costs. That's really, really good and we need to be able to keep a steady board and we will always have a steady board hopefully. It just depends on what the plays are like and what you're playing against. But he allows you to continuously get board really easily. Moving along, we got uh, one copy of Adino, Gate Guider Adino. I just use him because he is a Shadow Dive of two. Uh, he's got a butt of four, so I mean, that's kind of okay. Again, we're in a meta where five, six, and potentially seven uh, K on even size ones. Uh, heck, we even give them a size zero six six with Quintar. But it's got Shadow Dive, it can only be called to the center, and it's got a Critter 2, so it'll deal a good chunk of damage. Uh, following up in the final battle monsters, we got the newest version of the Final Gate Guider. We're running him out of 2 of. This is Final Gate Guider Coda Guideca. I'm guessing this is all Italian names, now I think about it. Which makes that really sad, because my last name is Italian. I should be able to, be able to pronounce these things better. Anyways, uh, Kota Gwindeka. Uh He's a 4-2-3. Call cost is put the top card of your deck into this card's soul and pay to gauge, who's got Shadow Dive. If your opponent has a monster in the center, he gains 5,000 power, meaning he's a 9k. And a crit of 1, making him a 3k attacker. He's got double attack and soul guard. So he's a big bump up from the original version of the uh, final gate guider. Uh, with Quintar... We can potentially uh, get that uh, 3k with the double attack. is very, very dangerous. Uh, combined him with Demento. Uh, he's dealing 6 damage, gaining me 2 life, and drawing me 2 cards. Uh, I believe, does Demento also get power? I forgot. Does not. Okay. Just want to make sure of something. So we're running him out of two of. Uh, since he does have Shadow Dive, uh, Detay can get him. He's just really, really good. He's a good finisher. If we don't kill them with their own monsters, I wanted a little bit of backup insurance to give me a secondary win condition, so we're running him out of two of. For items, we are running three copies of Death Sheeta's Pin, Death Pin Schreiber. Cold cost is pale or equip cost is pale life. Choose a death monster with the power of zero in your drop zone. Rest this card if you do. Call by pain is cold cost. We have a very fair amount of zero powered units, so this can target a large amount of stuff from the drop zone. 
Again, we need to ensure that this deck maintains a very steady, healthy board, and this deck lets us, this card lets us do it. We're running this out of three of. We're also running one copy of Deathwave Ron Sturban. This lets us move monsters that are in the center that we don't want in the center into the center. Uh, like Athora, for example, or putting, like, say, anything that's literally says cannot be there, we're going to put it there and make sure they get all the negative effects for it. Uh, this also lets us set up uh, Quintar very easily by moving something we don't want out of the center and putting that blank card into the center. So we're running just one copy of it. For impacts and impact monsters, we're running one copy of Gallus Bloodsucker. He's got Shadow Dive. He's a 527. Uh, since he's a size 2 monster, uh, any of our size 1 monsters can sit on the board with him. Pay 2 gauge and destroy monster mm -hmm. my field. This is very easily done. Uh, he's got Shadow Dive, and whenever he um, deals damage, I can gain life equal to the crit of my monster. So um, I can gain 2 uh two life pretty consistently just by swinging with them. I like them. I'm only running out of one of though because I have other win conditions. Running two copies of Hellgate Walter. Uh, this is a very costly impact. Uh, however, we don't really have a lot of monsters that cost gauge, so I wasn't too worried about that. So, pay three gauge, uh, call up to two death monsters with different sizes from my drop zone into separate areas by paying their call cost, and I get another attack phase. So if I can get Gate Guider and Demento, uh, Gate Guider Coda, and Gallus Demento into play with Hellwalter, and then get a second chance at swinging, or I can Hellgate um, uh, Gallo Bone Master and Octarth and continue to swing on their board. It just helps spectacularly. Although, yeah. Although with Gallus, if I've already used it once per turn, and other shenanigans. So, we're running this out of two of, because we have a lot of our win conditions already in the deck. We're just adding this in just for that final notch to make sure and push. Moving into spells, we're running four copies of Black Dragon Shield. Uh, again, as I said in my Abigail profile, this is a very standard spell in Darkness Dragon World. So, of course, we're running this out of four of. We're running three Midnight Shadows, or four Midnight Shadows, excuse me. The reason why we're running four Midnight Shadows is this lets us uh, avoid attacks. And so, we're not really using it to against us, just to prevent uh, the attacks of being hit uh, for, like, a monster. Because we do need to maintain board. We're running three copies of uh, Great River of Hades Archon Echelon. Uh, this prevents my monsters being destroyed by the effect. All my death monsters being destroyed by effects. We're running three of that. We're running two copies of Gate of Darkness Dragon World. Uh, it's a set spell. At the start of your opponent's main phase, I can pay gauge. I can call two up to two size one monsters from my drop zone by paying their call cost on the left or right once per turn. And when this card is put from the field into the drop zone, deal any damage to the opponent. So this lets us continuously maintain a board on the opponent's turn so he can continuously get Sabarage back into play if she's been destroyed just by use on the opponent's own turn just for paying a gauge and getting her out and then other cards are very easily put out. Uh, you can even chain with Octet or Dete and get even more cards out just for a simple two gauge. So Gate of the Darkness Dragon Lord is really, really helped this deck. Moving right along, we're running two copies of Death Favor. Uh, whenever, pardon me, gotta read this one. 
Uh, you can only cast one a death monster in my field is destroy, counter destroy monster on my opponent's field. If I have four or more different death cards in my drop zone, deal point of damage in uh, to the opponent. So this is just retribution kill. Uh, so they kill any of my death monsters. I get to kill any of their monsters and deal with them a point of damage. The most important thing to note about this card is there's no size restriction on the kill. So that means I can go after size threes, which is really, really important. Especially in our current meta. So, there's that. And plus it burns for a point of damage, which is always good. And then finally, we are got two copies of Soul Steel. I can gauge two, then the opponent has ten or more cards in the drop zone. I can gauge three. Uh, this is fairly easy to put on. I don't need a whole lot of gauge in the deck, but should I need to Hellgate Walter uh, that turn, and I know I'm going to need to. Uh, a little bit extra gauge never hurt, so potentially 2-3 gauge card gets the job done. That is my update of the Shido deck. I hope you guys enjoy it. Working hard to bring you guys buddy fight videos five days a week. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you.